Hi, welcome to TDCAT Tech. Today I'm looking at this. This is the uh, Power Expand Elite 13 in 1 dock from Anchor. And uh, all the products shown in this video were bought by me. There's no advertising here, there's no product placement or anything like that. This is just my th thoughts and first impressions. I also want to say that this is a completely unscripted review or first impressions video, okay? I'm not, I've not got anything in front of me. I'm not reading off a script here. So sometimes I do write a script, sometimes I don't. I think some people prefer it one way, some, some people prefer it the other. Please do let me know in the comments which version you prefer, whether you prefer me just to talk, maybe probably, probably for a bit longer, actually, without a script about a product, or whether you prefer me to just read off a page, which is usually sat here on my desk, so I have to do this all the time. I don't know. Anyway, let's start talking about the Anchor. I had to buy this because having recently invested in a uh, MacBook Pro, well, <laughs> there are only two ports on it. And I kind of thought to myself, well, you know what? I, I previously had a MacBook Air. I still, I've still got a MacBook Air. Uh, 2015, and I thought to myself, well, you know, how often do I really connect external devices? It's not a problem for me because I hardly ever connect external devices to it anyway. It just gets used as a laptop. Not the case because the MacBook Pro is so much more capable. It's essentially starting to replace my desktop. I haven't turned my desktop on for the last week. I've used the MacBook for everything. However, with a desktop, you need connectivity. I have to be able to connect my RME sound card. I have to be able to connect my NI keyboard to to the MacBook and the only way to do that is with a dock. So of course they're going to charge a premium for these things. This costs £270. It's not cheap. It's within the standard kind of price for a dock of this capability. So it they have it's not like Anchor have massively overpriced it and it is beautifully made. I will comment on that as a first plus point for this product. This is a solid metal casing. It has got a really good weight to it. I thought to myself when I saw it, although I really want something that stands vertically because, uh, because of the fact that it just takes up less space on your desk. I think it looks a little bit neater than something that's like that way. Will it stand up with all kind of cables hanging out the back? Because, you know, Ethernet cables are quite quite thick. A Cap7 cable is quite thick and whatever. And, and will it kind of just pull it over all the time and, and just be sort of pulled to the side and stuff like that. It doesn't, it's, it's absolutely fine. It's got a rubber base on here to keep it in place and it's got enough downward force, so weight, yeah, uh, to, um, to keep it in place. It's absolutely fine. All right, so let's take a look around the product. Oh, before I do that, I will say that it comes in a box. Funny that, right? It comes in a box. Uh, it's a nice box, actually. Um, I would expect a nice box for 270 pounds, but it's one of these nice boxes with a little magnetic clip like that. I like it. All that comes in the box is the dock, a 50 centimeter USB uh, Thunderbolt 3 cable, <clears throat> which is by all accounts a tad too short, but uh, the, maybe, the, maybe there's a reason why they provide one that's so short. I haven't tried it yet with anything longer. I guess it's absolutely fine, right? I mean, as long as the Thunderbolt 3 standard, it'll be okay. But, um, uh, and then of course it comes with a power brick. And the power brick is, as standard with all these docks, massive. Because that power brick has to be able to provide 20 volts at 9 amps, or 9 amps at 20 volts. And the reason for that is because it has to provide enough power to not only do all the stuff the dock does, but also pass power back to the laptop and charge the laptop. So this dock will provide, as per many of these type of docks, 85 watts from the Thunderbolt 3 which is this one, the Thunderbolt 3 upstream connector. And this will uh, power your MacBook or whatever device you're using at up to 85 watts. Now, don't worry if your MacBook potentially takes more than that. that. It doesn't matter. I think people often see this as a drop dead figure, if you like, you know, my, my, my device says it takes, you know, 90. So this is no good. Why don't they make them with the, do 90 or 90? It doesn't matter because you, your device isn't taking that much power all the time. It will do if it's ramped up to full, but then your battery provides power too. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter uh, that this will only provide 85 watts. The charger that comes with my MacBook Pro is only 60 something watts. So this is absolutely fine for that and will probably be fine for most um, MacBooks anyway. I, I'm, I'm speaking obviously 
for that because you know that's what I've been using over the last couple of weeks with this product. So uh, yeah, so 85 watts is usually absolutely fine. I don't know why they all seem to be 85 watts on the uh, upstream connection, but they are. Let's take a look around the back of the device. That is the Thunderbolt 3 upstream device. That's the single cable and it still amazes me even today in 2021 that all that can go via one cable. One cable carrying power back to your laptop, carrying 55K, 60 Hertz display information to, to, to my monitor here and all the rest of the stuff that the dock's doing on one cable. It still, I don't know, it still amazes me. Uh, then we have our Thunderbolt 3 downstream connection, which is what then goes off to your display or whatever. And because this is a Thunderbolt 3 device, there are only the two here. I think, as far as I know, that that is a, a limitation on the Thunderbolt 3 side, and you'll only ever see the kind of upstream and one downstream port on uh, a Thunderbolt 3 device like this. You've also got an HDMI output on the anchor, but no display port. There's no display port on here. Some people might find that a little bit weird. I personally don't care because my monitor connects on Thunderbolt and so I don't have anything else to connect. Uh, maybe I could throw another monitor in there, but um, it, HDMI would be fine and you can do 4K at 60 Hertz on the HDMI connection. Power in there and that's the, all these ports are really nice and rugged as well. They, they feel sturdy when you connect them. They don't feel like they're wobbling around and the cables are gonna fall out, particularly the power port. It's like got these little metal clasps on the inside. It makes it extremely tough to pull out and it, you feel like you're gonna break something when you pull it out, but it means that the thing stays in even with a good sort of, you know, even if it does get pulled a little bit, it will stay in. So it's really good to see a solid power port on the back of this thing, carrying the uh, 20 volts nine amp at nine amps. So, you know, a good amount of uh, power going through that. Gigabit ethernet, of course, and um, always gigabit. Why not 10 gigabit? Please, come on, 10 gigabits have been around for years. Why can't things start upgrading to 10 gigabit? Because, you know, internet connections now are frequently one gigabit, and if you, you know, you, if you can bring down kind of 120 megabytes per second off your internet connection, I can't transfer it that fast over my ethernet connection. The most I can get out of a gigabit ethernet connection is about 100, I don't know, about 115 or 116 megabytes per second. It's a big limitation now that, I, I don't know why we're still stuck with gigabit ethernet, ethernet connections. Anyway, we are, and it's gonna be better than Wi-Fi, right? So if you're one of these people like me that really does wanna get stuff wired up because Wi-Fi is great and it's very convenient, but in reality, Wi-Fi connections are not that fast. There are so many factors, uh, I won't get into that now, so many factors that impact Wi-Fi that means that even a good Wi-Fi 6 connection is never gonna be super, super fast and reliable. It's a Realtek chipset and the ethernet is the only little niggle I've had with this dock so far, and that is that I've had a couple of occasions where the connection has just gone. It's just disappeared, and it it still says it's connected. <clears throat> it still it still shows as green, but there's just no traffic. It's like as if the device has just disappeared completely. And uh, re just turning the dock on and off solves it. No idea why it's happened, and I'm not sure if it's a conflict with another device because. I haven't had it happen at all in the last five days, and I can't put my finger on exactly what I changed. So unfortunately, I have to tell you about that, but I have also can hopefully give you a bit of reassurance that chances are you'll be fine. Uh, but anyway, I think most docs make their stuff with this Realtek chip set anyway. A lot of them probably make their docs out of the same stuff. So, you're probably gonna find this problem on other docks as well. This, it won't be exclusive to Anchor, I don't think. If you are absolutely stuck, you can always get a little kind of uh, USB-C <clears throat> to gigabit um, ethernet adapter and plug it in the front or something. Or, you know, there are, there are ways around it and then you can bypass this one entirely. Then you get three USB-A connections on the back here too. Uh, each of those are five gigabits per second and provide only 0.9 amps output. So they are not really charging devices at a push. You could maybe charge a phone with one, but um, they're not designed for that at all. Moving on to the uh, front of the device. It has a power button. Not all docks have a power button. And this is really, really handy. I like the, the definite sort of dock on off you know, 
well, I guess that's what a power button does, right? But <laughs> it's, uh, I just like being able to connect everything up, then turn the dock on, let it do its thing where it kind of passes on all the connections, recognizes the sound card, sees the new monitor, changes its scaling, all that type of stuff. All done, you know, just when you want it to. It has a little LED light on it that shows green when it's on standby or waiting for a connection, and then blue when it's actually passing, you know, a Thunderbolt uh, connection, and it's <clears throat> when it's live, basically. We've also got a, uh, an SD4 card slot on the front here. But again, I don't have any cards that can test whether this performs to the capability of, of that. So 100, what's that, 156 megabytes per second um, or, or 300 and something megabytes per second. And I don't know, I don't have a card that can do that. And uh, you also have a micro USB card uh, slot on here as well. So really handy to have those two on the front. And again, really handy to have another USB-A port on the front. And not only is it a USB-A port, it's a 1.5 amp USB-A port. So this can be used for charging. Really good to see that on the front of the device. So you don't have to dig around in the back when I finish recording here. And I grab all the footage from my Atomos recorder, get the SSD drive out of there. I can just plug it into the front of here, pull the files across, out, out, drag it, take it off and um, job done. I've also got a headphone socket on here. This isn't something I would use, uh, but this one, one point to make is that this isn't kind of any pass through of digital audio and then converted to digital, you know, D, D to a converter for the headphone out of the sound card you're using on your MacBook. So for example, if I'm using my RME sound card here, it'd be lovely if this just passed through a of the final output of that into, to this headphone socket, but it doesn't. It, it's, it's its own sound card. So this is a real tech sound card and you would have to select that device as your output on your, on your laptop. So not ideal in that way. I would prefer it if it was a sort of just a digital pass through as it were. I don't know whether that would work. It makes more sense to me, but I suppose if you are using this out and about and you just, you, you know, you add a pinch, need a pair of headphones, need to put a pair of headphones in, you can just change your output and it would work okay. And finally, the two USB-C uh, uh, connections on the back, on, uh, sorry, on the front. There isn't one of these on the back, I wish there was, uh, but there are two on the front and these are, these are both 10 gigabit ports. And the bottom one is also a, it says PD, I'm not sure what that stands for. But um, anyway, this one supports Quick Charge 4 and can provide uh, 5 volts at 3 amps or 9 volts at 2 amps, which is required for fast charging devices. So if you've got like a, an iPhone 11 or iPhone 12, which supports fast charging, you can connect that up to this USB-C port <clears throat> and you'll get the same results theoretically, I think anyway, as you would from the uh, charger that you got with your iPhone 11. Oh yeah, you didn't get one with your iPhone 12, did you? <laughs> oh well, never mind. So there you go, a quick look around the Anker Power Expand Elite. It's a really nice device. Apart from that little gigabit uh, ethernet issue, that I've had, I've seen no other problems with it at all. It's worked absolutely flawlessly and uh, very nicely made. A bit on the pricey side, I would say. And <clears throat> if you are a, a an M1 user, you might want to wait for more Thunderbolt 4 docks to come onto the market because then you can take advantage advantages of some of the benefits of Thunderbolt 4, uh, which isn't speed because it's still a 40 gigabit per second connection. However, there will there are some other uh, benefits, which I think you know is, for example, being able to have more than just these two Thunderbolt ports. You can then potentially have three or four Thunderbolt ports on the dock itself from that single Thunderbolt connection. Anyway, it's a great product. I like it. I'm very happy with it at the moment. Anyway, have you got any questions on it, or uh, you'd like to see? Uh, anything more about it or you know just yeah just ask me anything you want on it that's fine just I'll see if I can answer you I'll answer you usually within a day or so thanks for watching I'll see you again soon bye